Good morning, you're watching CNN News 18. My name is Toya Singh. Over the next few hours, we're tracking something incredibly exciting for the country. India's third lunar mission, Chandrayaan-3, is all set to land on the moon today at around 6.04 p.m. If it is successful, India will become the first country to successfully land a spacecraft on the lunar south pole. We are just a few hours away from the moment. The actual landing is expected to take place at some point between 5.45 p.m. and 6.04 p.m. Now, we told you that India will be the first country to land on the lunar south pole. It will also become the fourth country to master the technology of at all landing on the lunar surface. Only three other countries have managed to do so, so far. The United States, the China and the Soviet Union. Now, We've brought you details about why today is so important. Ahead of the historic landing, ISRO yesterday released new pictures that they're saying show the confidence that they have that this mission will go off successfully. Because remember, in 2019, Chandrayaan-2 was supposed to do exactly this. But moments before touching down on the lunar surface, it crashed. Now, the live telecast of the operations will be beginning at 5.20 p.m. ISRO will be showing them, we'll also be showing them live. The link has also been shared, it's available as we said on ISRO's website. The Prime Minister who is on an official visit as we speak for the BRICS meeting, the BRICS meeting between Brazil, Russia, India and China, he'll also be joining the Chandrayaan-3 landing program virtually. All right, let's take a quick look now. We talked a little bit right now about the difference between Chandrayaan-2 and Chandrayaan-3. As we told you, Chandrayaan-2 is a spacecraft that failed in its mission. It wanted to land on the lunar south pole. It failed. It was supposed to land in 2019. Multiple changes have been made to the way in which Chandrayaan-3 has been built. All these changes have been incorporated and these changes that we're talking about are changes that we're going to highlight for you. So what are the different changes that the engineers and scientists have made to Chandrayaan-3 to make today possible? Number one, there is simply the cost of the two different figures. So Chandrayaan-2 costs 978 crores, Chandrayaan-3 costs 650 crores. Let's take a quick look at the components of the two and this is very important because the weight of the spacecraft is crucial when it comes to understanding whether or not it will be able to successfully land. When it comes to Chandrayaan-2, there is the orbiter, the lander, the propulsion module and the rover. Now with the other, with Chandrayaan-3, there is the lander and the rover. Now the question of payloads, how many payloads are there? on these spacecrafts. What are payloads? Payloads are essentially the word for the scientific equipment on board that will be used to conduct the experiments that the scientists at ISRO are hoping to carry out. One has 14, one has seven. Let's move on. Days to the moon. 48 days to the moon for Chandrayaan-2. Chandrayaan-3, which is of course in focus today, took off in early July. 42 days to reach this mark of August 23rd. Now remember it's hoped that it will be able to land on August 23rd today but scientists have also calculated if there's any change in weather they are calculating a future date too that might be used for the landing. Now what about the cameras on board? One is going to be used to detect more what's taking place. Now right now when it comes to the current settings that are there there are two cameras now that are there to sense what's going to be taking place. All right. Let's take a quick look now at some of the, these are the visuals that have been coming in. I just want to point out to you, you can see them behind me. These are visuals that ISRO has been putting out in the hours before the landing. My colleague Shrishti is with us. Shrishti has actually been bringing us all of these details over the last few hours. Let's go to her. Shrishti, thank you for joining us. Shrishti is with us live from ISRO. Remember, ISRO's headquarters are in Bengaluru, but this spacecraft took off from Sri Harikota. Shishti, bring us first the opening context. We've told our audiences some of the, the tagline data that this is going to make India, for example, the first country to successfully land on the lunar south pole. We've also told our audiences with this, India will be only one of four countries that have landed on the moon. But now tell us, Shishti, why this hurry? Why this urgency around the lunar south pole? And why in the last few years 
Are we seeing this sudden increase in the number of space missions that the United States, that India, that China, for example, have been sending? We know that in the 90s, the early 2000s, it had temporarily died down. So what led to that resurgence? Uh, definitely. So we are returning to the moon after almost, you know, 56 years after Russia first landed on the moon. That was about in 1966. And now the uh, uh, various countries are again planning moon missions. So what is the interest? The interest is towards the south pole of the moon. Uh, if you remember in 2008, India was uh, among the first countries to give evidence of water molecules trapped. In the on the lunar surface, so water is a very critical resource for uh, interplanetary missions, and more and more countries are planning uh, space expeditions to find more evidence of water present on the lunar surface. Apart from that, uh, Moon has uh, you know holds answers to various mysteries regarding the origin of the universe. The uh, uh, various experiments being planned through these lunar missions plan to understand the atmosphere of the moon as well as the lunar surface there are certain critical minerals which could probably uh, uh, pave way for resource utilization in the years to come and that is why uh, the US has also planned the Artemis program and Russia and China are also working together all these countries are planning to set up a lunar base in the next one decade so that is why a successful soft landing on the moon is extremely crucial for India for in order to plan its uh, future space missions as of now we are not collecting the lunar samples. China has already done it, Russia was the first country to do so. But in order to collect those samples, we'll have to master the whole technology of softly landing on the moon, which is what we are trying to achieve through Chandrayaan-3. Uh, we have conducted three missions uh, since 2008. Uh, the first mission just had an orbiter. The second mission had a, a lander as a rover, but we could not succeed in the la soft landing. And this time we want to achieve that feat and like you rightly said, we want to be the first country to land on the south pole of the moon. South pole of the moon is a, in a part of the moon where uh, not much sunlight reaches. So it has much more uh, clues to uh, the, the presence of water on, on, on that surface. Thank you, Shrishti. Stay with us. Both the south and the north pole of the moon have craters that don't receive much sunlight. Thank you for bringing us that context. Shrishti, I'll ask you to stay with us. Let's go over now to two guests that we have joining us today for a lot more in terms of context. We're going to have a lot of such discussions through the day today to understand more about why Chandrayaan-3 is such a big deal. 